Picture this. A brand new multi-slice CT scanner is arriving in the radiology department, promising faster, more accurate scans. But before it can start making a difference, it's your responsibility as the PAX admin to integrate it seamlessly into the health system. Don't worry. Together, we'll walk through that process step by step. Hi, this is Allie from PaxBootCamp.com, and we'll guide you through the high-level process of getting this modality configured and storing to Pax. The first step is working closely with the CT installation engineer, networking team, biomed, managers, and technologists to ensure all components are aligned. Communication is essential. This is where delays happen if you're not synced up. Early on in the project, make time to review the DICOM conformance statement of the new scanner. That is, if you are given enough lead time. Wishful thinking, right? This document outlines which SOP classes the scanner uses for image storage, query, retrieve, and work list. You'll want to compare this with your PAX conformance statement to ensure compatibility. If there's a mismatch in SOP classes, work with the CT vendor to adjust the scanner's configuration. This same approach applies to the modality work list as well. Ensure the MWL is compatible with your PAX or RIS setup before moving forward. In some hospitals, the biomed team may handle parts of the configuration, such as physically inputting the AE title, IP address, and port number. In others, it's the CT vendor, PAX team, RIS team, or combination. Regardless of who manages the setup, knowing the configuration details is crucial for success. We'll dive into the configuration, assuming the PAX team will lead the effort. First, the CT scanner will need an AE title to identify itself within the system. You'll need to follow the hospital's AE title naming convention. For example, your new CT might be named CT Prod 5. Make sure to enter this exactly, as AE titles are case sensitive. Next, update the PAX system configuration by entering the AE title, IP address, and port number for the new scanner. This involves adding the CT to the PAX DICOM server configuration allowing the scanner to send images directly to the archive. Once everything is configured, test the connection using a C echo test. This verification will confirm that the scanner can communicate with PAX. Make sure it's configured to the test environment first. This allows you to send test images without disrupting live workflows. When setting up the modality work list, different institutions handle it in different ways. In some hospitals, the RIS team owns this, while others rely on the PAX or EMR team. Ensure the scanner is correctly set up to retrieve the work list from the system that manages it in your institution. Next, let's talk about the site survey. Look for the most convenient Ethernet jack or wireless access point. It's essential that the CT scanner has a static IP address to establish a DICOM association. If it's a wired setup, hard code the static IP into the NIC of the device. For wireless setups, provide the MAC address to the networking team and they'll reserve a specific IP to the CT. Always check with your network team first though, as policies can vary between institutions. The security team plays a crucial role by reviewing new devices to ensure it adheres to hospital policies regarding data protection, patient privacy, and overall network safety. You may be asked to provide vendor documentation or facilitate a meeting between the vendor and IT security. Before going live, work closely with the radiologists to ensure the images sent to PAX meet their expectations. Ask them to review image quality and how the images display in their hanging protocols. It's also important to connect the radiologists with the CT vendor to confirm that the vendor delivers on the quality and performance they promised. Finally, the testing phase involves everyone. The PAX team, the RIS or EMR team, the CT installation engineer, and the CT technologists. Run a few test scans to make sure images are being transmitted correctly. The work list is pulling patient data and the system is running smoothly. Each team should verify their portion of the workflow, and once everything is confirmed, the scanner will be ready for use. When you're ready to move from the test environment to production, update the AET port and IP address on the scanner for live patient scanning. Be on standby during the first few scans to make sure everything works without issues. By following these steps from configuring the modality to testing with all teams, you'll have your new multi-slice CT scanner integrated into PAX and ready for action. Remember, teamwork and communication are key to a smooth setup. Stay tuned for more tips on optimizing your PAX workflow. If you want to learn more about this topic in particular, check out the link below for a free course module from our website, paxbootcamp.com. 
like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon for more videos. To earn CE credits while learning about PAX, be sure to check out our premium content at courses.paxbootcamp.com.